Hello, this is Tazlon, and I'm in Winterberg, otherwise known as Ruinberg Painted White, and pretending we have another map in my VK2801 for the Lighthouse series Anatomy of an Orlix, Volume 4. And I already have a, a Volume 5, 5 film in the books. It's just a matter if I can figure out what the heck replay it is because I. I lost track of which one it is, so I don't know if I'll be able to play that one or not. Or record that one. Let's see. In this battle, there are a lot of enemy mediums. They have uh, three TDs, and we have five. They have one scout, we have two. So I'm thinking right away, the no artillery, that the field is going to be active. A lot of mediums on both sides, but especially for the enemy. I'm hoping some of our mediums and TDs go to the field as well, because I'm expecting the enemy to push the field. Normally, if you get a lot of lights and mediums, the the field is uh, full of tanks. So I'll come over here and get ready to go. There are some changes in Winterberg because the, the bushes tend to be more sparse on winter maps. Same bushes, it's just the, the cover, the concealment isn't as great because there's less foliage. I'm going to knock down this little, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's a post box or what it is, but it's gone. Maybe it's a telephone booth, who knows. I never really looked at it other than to kill it because I want that out of my way so I can have a line of line of fire up here, line of sight. Have a medium and two TDs coming with me and the Panther 2 is back in the back row. It's important, um, the significance of it being staying way back there is it can support us if the enemy crosses over the midfield or if they pull up onto that little ridge that runs down the road. But if we go over on their side of the map, we're going to lose the support of two of our TDs. So it's really in our interest to let them come to us right now. One twenty-two is on the way. T forty-four is on the way. They've already crossed midfield. There's the CDC. So they're pushing on the field side, which is what I thought they would do. I'm going to see if I can get back across the road now because it seems like everybody's concentrated over on that side. It's a mistake to pull up and try to shoot down the center road at them because there's going to be more tanks back in here and if you pull out to here to try to shoot this way you're just going to get in a crossfire and you're going to die most of the time. Now, it hasn't been scouted over there yet but I'm not, I'm not worried about it right now. This is a good spot here. I'll try to have a shot set and just fire when he goes and I shoot high. I needed to aim down lower. So I'll try it again. Hit him that time, but I hit the 44. STA 1's moving up, I'm going to move up with him. We have uh, two TDs up with us and the J Panther 2's moving up at last. This is cool. Now our TDs are up to where they can support us if we cross over midfield. So everything's set to move up here. Any remaining enemy have uh, backed out of the field. Moving over this way, hopefully be able to flank anybody we find. Two tanks over there, CDC and the T-44. Beat up T-44. Hopefully I can get a shot at him. But the CDC is right there, and I miss him again. That's twice, dude. 
I won't miss y'all game long. He's down to 433 hit points. I can do that on one shot with HE if I hit him, like right now. Okay, not like right now. But the thought was there. I don't ever change to heat on a CDC because HE gives you more damage potential and it chews CDCs up. So I keep it on HE with them. Go for the extra damage. Ooh, 44's. I take a shot, but he's retreating around the building. I'll stay up here to reload and then I'll go get him. He's coming to me, so I'll kill him. CDC hit me again. He hits me one more time, I'm dead, so. If I hit him one time, he's dead. Could be interesting. You can see where the tanks are. Six tanks left to four. Five, I mean. Jeez, can't even read. Now it's five to five. It's five on five for the win. I know the RHM is up here by the church. There he goes. I just couldn't get my turret in time to get a shot. He sees me, maybe he'll back up. I'm gonna get ready in case he backs up. I'm gonna be ready to go. Here he comes. I shoot first, he dies. Now, the CDC and the 25 slash two have been looking at each other. I know where all the tanks are. I'm gonna see if I can sneak around here and get the CDC. My one question is whether that heavy can spot me as I come around and he's out of the picture at the moment. Cool. I should be able to sneak around the corner here and hopefully the CDC is looking back toward the TD. And he turns back toward the TD just in time to die. One tank left, IS-2. Ooh, I need to get around the corner here before he shoots me. I don't want to get shot again. And he's dead. So. Some totally non-remarkable stats for the battle, except for the fact that I got Orlix. 1,134 XP, no spots, no spotting damage. 579 damage with three kills. They were all tier eights. As I said, I don't I don't go into battles thinking, um, cool, I can go for Orlix today, or I can get a pass Kuchi, or I can get this, or I can get that. I go into battles thinking about the enemy tanks, my tanks, where I need to go to give my team an advantage or to help my team out. And if um, medals happen along the way, they happen. Now, as I start playing, yeah, there may be some battles where it's like, in this battle I didn't. I didn't know I had an Orlix until I got done. There may be some battles where I'm looking at the tanks I've shot. It's like, man, I have a tier 8 and a tier 9 if I can go on and get an Orlix. But it doesn't impact how I play. It's just like I recognize the fact. Or if I kill two arty, if I know if I get another one, I get a pass Gucci or something. Or at the end of the battle, it's like, man, if I ram this guy and get the win, I get a Top Gun too. But I never do it at the start of the battle. Because if you go into a battle thinking, cool, I'm going to get an Orlix. Or I'm going to go for the Dimitru. Or I'm going to go for this medal or that medal. You end up playing for the medal instead of playing to win. And if it ends up being a close game, just having that thought in your mind can mess you up to where you you do the wrong thing. So go into the bat, go into the games looking for wins, and then along the way, if the situation presents itself, where you're cognizant of the fact, hey, if I, if I get this kill, I get a medal, plus it helps me win. That's cool, but don't play for medals. Play for wins. The medals will come. If you win a lot, you'll get all the medals. And, and in this case, you saw it's like in the beginning, there's a TD back here, a TD back here. They can only shoot effectively up, up to here. So if we try to push, what are we doing? We're taking our two TDs out of the equation. And if they have anybody back here, we're putting them into the equation, which gives them a huge advantage. So what we do is you just set up defensively, let them move across the lines to where your TDs get to fire at them. Then when you beat them up, either you kill them or they retreat, hopefully, and these guys did, they played this smart, they moved up when they realized that it was time to move up. 
and we were able to push over, overwhelm the field, and come down here and finish off the battle. You got to play within the realm of what the enemy's giving you and how your team is set up to support. If the TDs would have pushed right from the beginning, we probably could have been more aggressive and won. But if we would have pushed from the beginning this game with the way our TDs were set up, we would have lost the field. And who knows what would have gone on in the battle. So be aware of where everybody is and what it means to you. And final thought once again, don't go into battle seeking medals. Go into battle seeking wins, and the medals will come if you play well. From Winterberg, getting Orlix in my VK2801 Orlix machine. Happy hunting.